So Adivka has fallen, and it's a pretty messy fight that happened, but the Russians are outnumbering the Ukrainians. So the Ukrainians had no choice but to leave, and they're they're trying to leave, but it, they're just surrounded by Russians. And for every one shell that the Ukrainians fire, the Russians are firing 10 back. So there's all sorts of issues and problems, but the main one being funding. And I think later in February, this February, they're going to be the G7 is going to have to get together and talk about frozen Russian assets. They're going to have to talk about reconstructing Ukraine or even funding the war effort further with seized assets from Russia. Russia is and has basically said it's going to retaliate if they seize their assets with seizing Western assets. But I'm wondering if seizing Russian assets is going to be is gonna is gonna be that much of a problem because what 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 they're doing is they're they're seizing all the assets from one country from the Russian central bank they're they're taking all that money away from one country Russia but what are these what what is this list of of Western assets that Russia has like is it is it is it a list of Western assets that are dis- distributed among a number of nations like a, a bunch of European nations or a bunch of including the United States and Canada and all of that. Like, I mean, so if they were to retaliate with seizing Western assets, wouldn't the risk kind of be spread around uh, amongst a, a bunch of different countries as opposed to like, you know, seizing assets from just the United States, which I doubt there's much of. Um, but so does, does that equation kind of work in our favor? Um, who's to say, right? I know the European Union on February 12th, they just passed legislation saying that they're going to use all the taxes from frozen Russian assets um, at Euroclear in Belgium. They're going to use all the taxes from, from those those investments and those securities to fund um, the reconstruction of Ukraine. So, you know, even before the February end of February meeting, it looks like, you know, the world is moving in that direction. Um, but Apart from funding, I got to say, you know, I read this article by Tom Malinowski, a congressman from New Jersey in August of last year, and he was talking about um, Ukraine joining NATO. I don't know exactly what the circumstances need to be for Ukraine to join NATO. I know that for sure they would have to stop fighting Russia. They would the, The war would have to end. So... Tom Malinowski again was saying that if they stopped fighting Russia and just focused on reconstruction and defending the rest of Ukraine, that would be an end to the war. And then that opens them up to NATO membership. And I think it's so crucial. I don't know why more people are talking about this, but Ukraine, and especially considering what's going on now, where they're they're kind of retreating. I mean, you know, and it's not getting better because they're not getting funding, right? They, they they need to start thinking about maybe joining NATO, maybe stopping the fighting and just joining NATO. Um, that should work as a deterrent, but you never know with Putin and Russia, who knows what they'll do. Um, but it's the best deterrent we have. Um, it would be Ukraine just joining NATO. Um, other than that, um, I don't I don't see how Ukraine is going to regain all their territory. It's it seems hopeless. It doesn't seem like something that's going to happen. I used to think it's, it was going to happen, that they would even get Crimea back, but it's looking less and less likely. So funding NATO, we'll see how it goes. Um, yeah, we'll leave it there. Bye.